My guest today is Vandela Manafi. Vandela is retired from her career in the Department of Justice, first starting in the Atlanta Penitentiary System, then eventually transferring to the Grand Prairie Office Complex in 2005. Vandela has become a professional volunteer in her retirement, working locally in Grand Prairie and Arlington with local elected officials, nonprofits, and citizens to connect people to one another. She works hard at being a community advocate, and on the day of our recording, she had received a proclamation from Jeff Williams, the mayor of Arlington. Vandela talks to me about her journey to Grand Prairie and her first job as a community advocate, as an elementary school student fighting to keep her elementary school open. Vandela is a breath of fresh air, and I can't wait to speak with her again soon. <laughs> so I'm just so glad that you're here, and I've been wanting to talk to you for so long. Um, you had a big day, though, this morning. Was it this morning that this yes, happened? Yes, I did. Tell everybody Actually, what happened yesterday. this morning. <laughs> Uh, I had um, Mayor Williams, uh, God bless his soul, I love him dearly. I was his very first volunteer uh, in his for his campaign when he won for mayor in 2015. Oh, wow. So uh, I actually met him at a Lunar New Year festival and he asked, uh, I, I asked him if he could come and speak at our son's school. They were having career day and he owns a engineering firm. And I heard that and I was like, oh, cool. I said, um, can you come and speak at my son's school? And he was like, yes, here's my business card. He's always so jovial. And I said, thank you so much. So I was talking to someone and I heard someone over, I over, overheard someone say, how's the campaign going? And he was like, oh, we're just getting started, but we should be get, kicking off pretty soon. It's a short campaign cycle. This is January, election is May. So that's pretty short. Mm -hmm. So I said, um, I said, is it, and afterwards I said, excuse me, sir. I said, I'm retired. I said, can I do anything to help you? I don't mind, you know, you were willing to help and come and speak at our son's school. I'll help you on your campaign. He was like, oh, sure. Let me give you my campaign manager's number and she'll be in touch. So I got the information. I show up there at the aid of Arlington uh, where we were officing out of. So I show up and I said, I'm here to volunteer. And then he, I said for Jeff Williams campaign and he was, I said, what is he running for? He <laughs> said, mayor. I was like, you are kidding me. <laughs> I said, against Dr. Clark. I said, good luck, but I told my volunteer, so here I am. <laughs> and the rest is history. So like, you had seriously a the rest, he's been incredible. Every time he I have needed something, uh, because I'm a Grand Prairie citizen, I I always tell people I'm the tri-city person mm -hmm. when it comes to volunteering because I'm Grand Prairie citizen, Mansfield ISD, but our kids' school is physically located in Arlington. So, and I live, like I can walk from Grand Prairie where I live to Arlington. <laughs> Why do you walk all the way to Arlington? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> it's really probably like 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So yeah. I like telling people I walk from Grand Prairie to Arlington because they have a visual of like the farthest end of Grand Prairie to like the farthest end of Arlington and I walk that far, but it's always a good conversation. That's, so you have your own day today, right? It's proclamation. You got a proclamation day. Yes, I got a proclamation for, was for volunteering and supporting the city of Grant of Arlington the way that it reads, like in, during his entire, I guess, period, his, uh, being the 30th mayor is what he was. Ah. And so, yes. So, I that's amazing. That well, is amazing. You know, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of a legend that a lot of people that maybe work and don't do a whole lot of stuff. And when I say work, I mean like still work like a job, like a nine to five job or something where you, it's hard to get out and, and volunteer as much as you do, but you do so much. And I don't know that people outside of that realm, you know, know just how many things you do. And so I'm just, I just can't believe 
you you basically are a professional volunteer now that you're retired from what you did as a career. And so now you have a new career of volunteering, but what did you do before this? So in your job, uh, what did you do before you retired? Before I retired, before I get into to what before I retired, I, I always like to clarify when people hear volunteer, I'm a different type of volunteer, mm-hmm. I'm a professional volunteer. So when most people f- hear volunteer, they hear the physical part of volunteer. And I'm the kind of volunteer is I connect people with needs with people that wants and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to physically do anything. It's just like if Jenna has an organization, the powerful organization, of Jenna Picor, let's say it's a foundation, and you provide, say, um, clothes and food to needy people, you would contact me and say, Vandell, I have someone that has donated um, these clothes and this food to me, and I need to find an organization or families to give them to. I was like, okay, Jenna, I think of it. And I don't know. I mean, God has truly blessed me to be able to do this. I called a couple organizations said uh, Jenna's foundation has been gifted or donated clothes and food. Call Jenna. She's going to be able to help you. And that's what I do. So I could actually be a consultant and get paid for what I do, but I'm a volunteer. So I don't get paid for what I do. And that's the difference between a consultant and a volunteer. So I tell people uh, I've truly been blessed because I can do everything from my couch with my, my, a text message. Because I was seriously injured in two accidents, which uh, has in essence almost rendered me disabled sometimes. The first accident was in February 2017 uh, when I went to visit my dad. He was on hospice. He's he's passed away in two he passed away in 2018. Oh, I was um, t-boned by a pickup truck, and the the severity of the accident was so bad that the r- rear tire was knocked off. The gas fuel line was knocked off. And the rear passenger seat was indented until the middle of the, the back seat, the oh back door, gosh. the rear passenger door was. And the, the police officer on duty said, had I had gas in the car, it would have exploded. <gasps> but it wasn't my time. <laughs> and then uh, the day after my 56th birthday, everybody was talking about Corona 2020, how bad it's been. December 30th, my husband and I were rear-ended by an 18-wheeler. Oh my goodness. And yes, we were. And I tell you when I say that God protects fools and angels, (laughs) (laughs) I'm one that he has protected because the, my husband said the, the driver hit us into the intersection and we were in Dallas and the cars went around our vehicle we did not get hit and, and traffic was in both directions. And we were at a stoplight and he rear-ended us. So the light was green and we didn't get hit. The, the cars went around us. Wow. And yes, we sustained serious injuries, but I am alive. Um, I didn't know, I mean, I, I, I have broken bones, but they didn't pierce my skin. Uh, I didn't bleed any blood. So the severity of my injuries versus what it could have been, wow. it wasn't my time. So I, I tell people, I stay home when it rains. I stay <laughs> off the street because both of my accidents occurred on rainy days. So oh. people now know that if it's raining, don't expect to see Vandela. That's why you texted so, me yeah. earlier. You even said it's raining. And uh, so let's yes. see you. <laughs> yes. I get it. I get it. <laughs> That's why. Otherwise, I would have been honored to be graced in your presence. Oh, I would have loved. Oh, yeah. would, there will come a time. I have a feeling that this will not be the last Absolutely. time. That Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. So you've done that. That's been a lot that's happened just in a very short period yes. of time. But in um, a very short period of time. Yes. Yeah. 
So, but this is. But it allows me to do what I do mm -hmm. when I am having problems with my vision, my uh, light sensitivity or noise sensitivity. I can still turn off my phone and do whatever it is in a couple of days. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that gives me the flexibility of still, being, still allowing me to help people. Yeah. Even though I may be in my bed, on the couch, in the recliner, or in a dark room, and I can turn my screen down and my, my, the, the font is really big. So it still allows me to help people. So people think, man, she is everywhere. And literally, <laughs> I'm not. That's why I tell people it's because of other people I meet because I'm just a conduit that, uh, that I allow, that I allow the skills and resources that I have connections with people. And I, I know that it's God that has allowed me to do all these things and put wonderful people in my life because I couldn't be the person that I am without the people that, that I am surrounded by. Yeah. Prime example, Mayor Williams, Mayor Jensen, uh, now Dark, uh, Mayor Evans in, in Mansfield, mm -hmm. former uh, Mayor C David Cook, all of those people allowed me to be able to, if I needed something, I can reach out to them. Right. And that has made me the person who I am, and I, I'm humbled by it. Well, so tell for people that one of the reasons that I started doing this podcast was exactly kind of kind of similar to what you're talking about is I was like, I know all these people that I have conversations with that maybe most citizens might not get a chance to have conversations with all the time. And I'm like, I would love for people to hear the conversations that I have and um, learn how to become more involved or maybe even, you know, meet people that are in their community, the local local elected officials, the, the leaders of the nonprofits, and how can we bring more attention to that? And that's, that's really what I started to do. So, but I think that some people can be a little intimidated by maybe putting themselves in the middle of that kind of situation. How do you even start something like that? So maybe, cause you're not from Grand Prairie, that's not where you're from. Um, so yeah. how did you get to be, or not even from Grand Prairie, you're not from Texas but get to be in the middle of something like that and get to be so connected and, and learn. How did you start? What kind of attitude does that take? Attitude is everything. And, mm. and I truly believe that because when you have a positive attitude, people want to be around you and people don't want to be around. Even, even when I'm down, I, try to still have a positive attitude when I'm in pain I still try to have a positive attitude and people ask you how are you doing nobody wants to hear that you're in pain so you I always say I'm doing fine nobody wants to hear my long list of oh I can't see I'm losing the vision in my left eye and I'm having these ocular migraines and I I can't move my neck I have to move my body if I went down the list of the pain that I was actually experiencing, they were like, okay, I got to go. <laughs> so why? It's, 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 I, I'm still living. So I have, that's what I'm grateful for. If I can wake up every day, no matter how I'm feeling, I still try, just like my husband say, you should always have a grateful heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful. Yes. That's very, so very that's, true. That's what I'm grateful for. Yes. So, so you but moved back to your, your original question. Yeah. Yes, I moved from um, Atlanta. I lived in Atlanta for 18 years and I worked, I retired from the Department of Justice, Federal Bureau of Prisons, and the government downsized in 2005. So they abolished the position that I was in in Atlanta. So I had to find another job. I didn't want to go to Coleman, Florida, to the complex that was um, that they were opening because of the cost of living. I didn't want to live 
in Florida where Mickey was and having to pay all of that, Mm -hmm. that wasn't desirable for me. And uh, I didn't want to go to Washington, D.C. My sons were at the time were um, one and three. And then my my youngest son actually turned two the day we moved to Grand Prairie. (laughs) And so I had to make a decision where I wanted to go. So I was like, okay, they're opening up a complex in Grand Prairie. I say, Grand Prairie, that sounds like they would have tumbleweeds, <laughs> but okay, I'm good with that. I grew up in Chicago. I was the only one wearing cowboy boots. They used to, my friends now tell me that I jinxed myself because I grew up in Chicago and I was the only one that wore cowboy boots. Oh, that's hilarious. I love <laughs> cowboy <laughs> Yes, so here I am, inner city girl, wearing cowboy boots. <laughs> yeah, I loved cowboy boots. So, and so when they downsized, I had to decide where we wanted to live. I didn't want to have a long commute. Uh, so because it was a Grand Prairie office complex, I said, I want to live in Grand Prairie. And at the time, Mansfield um, had an innovative school district. I was knew eventually I would want to put my kids in school and not pay for private school. So we were able to live in Grand Prairie in Mansfield ISD. And that was a compromise for me. And that's how I became a Grand Prairie citizen. And I love being a Grand Prairie citizen. Everywhere that I go, no matter where I am, I was blessed to be part of a uh, fundraise, not a fundraise, a blood drive where we uh, over a thousand donors and it was over 3000 lives for North Texas will be saved as a result of that. Wow. So I, they asked me to do an interview and I was talking about all these people that I met from all these different places, different countries, like literally from around the world and it was streamed around the world. And I told them I've met people from everywhere, including Grand Prairie, that means me. <laughs> So the world now knows Grand Prairie, Texas. So. <laughs> I love that. I love Grand Prairie. I do. I every everybody knows if I'm anywhere and they're talking about different places, I scream out and Grand Prairie. So, <laughs> yes. Well, as someone that was raised here, that makes me happy that somebody that's a that's a um a someone that didn't grow up here but got, but got here as fast as they could so to speak but yes. um you know yes. it's changed a lot and since even since I was a kid and um it's 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 now that I've become an adult and I've understood what it is about this city that makes it unique you know it's it's something that I'm really proud of and I was recently doing some interviews from some of the candidates um because I'm a real estate agent we were we were trying to figure out who we're going to endorse for the candidacy and oh there you are and uh, <laughs> and you're wearing my favorite color I love that yes. <laughs> um but I was talking to some of these candidates and I was talking with other agents and we were interviewing the people, some of the people from Grand Prairie, and we get off the phone call with these candidates and they go, what is going on in Grand Prairie? Everybody down there seems to love it. They all, uh, it seems like such a unique place. Like, what are they doing so well? And I was kind of taken aback and with, with realizing that I'd maybe taken for granted just how cool and unique of a city that Grand Prairie has certainly become. And um yeah so I don't know you've lived in a lot of places do you feel that way not a lot of places but you've lived in a couple places that are not like Grand Prairie so (laughs) no it 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 it, I I attribute it to the community as a whole and the volunteers that make the community Mm -hmm. because there are so many wonderful organizations and people willing to come out and support no matter what it is somebody from Grand Prairie it's there's going to be people to show up and help whatever the cause is and that's what I love so much about Grand Prairie Mm -hmm. no matter what it is no matter what you want to do or whatever your needs are there is an organization out there willing to help you and if they can't help you they're going to find you help outside of where wherever it is that they can find the help to support you and I think that's 
that's the greatest thing that can be attributed to Grand Prairie. It's the, the bedroom community that really isn't a bedroom. It's Grand Prairie is huge, mm -hmm. but it still smells, feels like everyone knows everyone because we're always together at something. That's true. And that's why. <laughs> and yes. you're right. Um, you know, I just got done talking to Monica, who is the new director over at Pregnancy Resource Center. And I've talked to Tammy Chan, you know, over, obviously everybody knows who mm -hmm. Tammy Chan is. And I was talking about that um, because I was, I was talking about just that, about the connectivity of all the nonprofits. And I was on the Housing and Community Improvement Commission, and we were responsible for funneling some of the federal money that the city gets and then to into the, some of the nonprofits. And from there, I got to learn a lot more about just how connected all the nonprofits actually are to one another yes. in terms of mm -hmm. how they voluntarily work together. Nobody yes. forces them to do that. Like, it's not no. like the nonprofits have to do to work together and help each other. But in Grand Prairie, they do it purposely and yes. intentionally with one yes. another. And I think that that's so unique. Yes, it is. They are true partners. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about people that come together, it's not my organization, your we partner. What can we do together? You having a fundraiser? Yes, we're going to have to support your fundraiser. Um, I have a family that needs this. Okay, you call this agency and talk to this person. They're willing to help you because they are true partners. They are. True and, partners. you know, nonprofits and, and the way that nonprofits can make a dollar go further than anything else and way the way that they can, they, they, you know, our nonprofits have very specific intentions, which I think is really important. If you have a lot of nonprofits with very specific reasons for existing, and then you can kind of help and, and, and help the other person. As an example, Lifeline helps specifically kids that are, that are struggling with homelessness, but they're, they're for, within GPISD schools, because their intention is not just homelessness as a broad term in terms of everybody, that's, but it's keeping kids in school. Well, then we also right. have a homeless organization that helps with the adults that don't maybe right. not have children. That's really specific. And I think that when communities can be really specific with, with their nonprofits, the money goes so much further and there can yes. be so much more help with the people that need it. Yes, I totally agree. I totally agree. And I think knowing what, who the resources, the people that have the resources and the organization and having, they do so well on awareness. They really do. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think the organizations are so successful because people make other people aware of the resources that are available. Yeah, and Grand Prairie, the, one, of the, one of the unique things, and, and, and I talk about this all the time, you mentioned that Grand Prairie is a really large town. It's large geographically, and it's like long and skinny. And so you've got the top, yes. the north side, then you've got the south side. Mm -hmm. And um, making sure that people on the south side know the things that are going on with the north side, especially with, with nonprofits and with charities, is not always the easiest thing to do. And so it requires no. people to give out you know, to, to bring awareness, but how did you get to be doing this? Like how, where did that, how did that start? Uh, let me, probably, I could probably say when I was in third grade, maybe, you know, being a PK, you were involved in everything. If mm. Like a preacher's kid, you, you're the usher, you collect the offering, <laughs> you, you're, you're the, you count the offering, you, you're the secretary, you make bank deposits, you, you sing in the choir, you play the drums, you do everything and you learn these skills being a preacher's kid. So when our school, in, when I was in elementary school, they wanted to close our school, not that there was anything wrong with our school, they just wanted to close our school and bus kids to another school. And so me, I didn't want to ride the bus to another school because I was taking other kids to school and I was in third grade, <laughs> taking kids to school that was in kinder. Oh, wow. <laughs> I laugh about that now because imagine having to walk from, say, Roma's okay. probably to fire station number one. Okay. And 
then down the street, probably not as far. No, don't go there. Say from Roma's all the way to 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 um, Sonics, and then walk to Park Admin, oh, and Park my. Admin would be the school. I did that every day. Yeah, you were how old? I was in the third grade, which means I was what seven <laughs> or eight years old. Wow. Yes, and I had five kids that I was responsible for. Oh my <laughs> word hold hands oh my goodness and I, I I yeah I did so helping you has really been in your blood really your entire life yes mm-hmm. it, it really has my entire life so um, when they wanted to close our school I was like okay we're going to make some signs and then we're going to march around the school and tell them um, save our school SOS save our school and so and we did, and we got um, some parents involved, people at church involved, and the news came, and it made a big story at the time, and they didn't close our school. And my cousin eventually was the principal at that school at one time. That is like the coolest story yes. ever. <laughs> yes, it's, it's still open. It's a magnet school now. So were your parents like really supportive of you being like an advocate at the age of the third uh, at third grade yes yes they were yes, that's really were. I think that that's so important because I was just talking to Martin over at Bonaire we were talking about mentorship and about teaching the younger generations how to be involved and how to care about things and it takes mm-hmm. it takes the parents and the adults in the community to really teach kids how they need to care, number one, is just care Mm -hmm. and get involved in the community, but also how to do it responsibly in a way that's like helping the the community be better. And if you don't have those adults that support that, uh, you know, kids are just kind of walking around aimless. They don't really know what they're doing. So that's really cool. You had a a supportive parents and plus they were in the church. So of course they're going to be like, you know, oh, you're going to do something great. (laughs) (laughs) Um, For me, I, I, I just love getting people involved. I I always tell the story and I don't care who it is. I'm always, (laughs) if I'm making a reservation, I ask people about, have they volunteered? Well, what's that? What do I need to, I said, you can volunteer by reading to kids. You can sign up by doing a blood drive in your office. You can sign up by, there's so many things that you can do. So like, if I call some place and we start having a good conversation, I was like, do you volunteer? I just ask randomly. So one thing, one time I was getting some points um, added to my account from Starbucks. I only go to Starbucks if somebody takes me. So, but we always <laughs> buy gift cards for teachers for Christmas. So we get all these points. And so I add them, you know, after I get the receipt. So I was talking to the guy, I can't, where was he? He was in some country. I'm having a concussive head injury moment. So he was in another country and his English wasn't great, but it was pretty good. He could read the script as to what he needed to say, how to apply the points. I said, do you read to the kids in your community? And he was like, why, what do you say? I said, why don't you teach them your script? I said, it's in English, teach them that in English so that they'll know some English. And I said, that way they'll have a desire to want to learn more. And he was like, oh, I never thought about that. What a, he, oh I said, gosh. promise me you're going to do it. He said, yes, I am. He was all excited. He said, yes, I am. I said, you have the script. Teach them. That's all it takes sometimes is one person recognizing that something that you do that you see is so routine and just something that you, it could actually be useful for other people. And it seems so... Yes easy and it seems so silly to even acknowledge that but when you have people that have never thought that even the ability to read could be something that is useful to others that's all it takes sometimes just that little spark yes you know that little spark and he was so excited he never he didn't think about it 
Well, most people yeah. don't. And so yes. Most people no, don't. They don't. He didn't and give me. He didn't give me any extra points, but. Uh, <laughs> he... <laughs> but he's going to go and teach some kids in his country how how to read the script from Starbucks. So. I, mean, I was happy. That's that's so awesome, and I think I think that that's that touches on such a such a good point. Is once you start to first of all, when you know where the areas that exist within your community, when you where you know where they need help, it's a lot easier for you to go. You know what? I know somebody that that can do that really well, or stuff like that. And the other thing too, I think that people think volunteering is this huge big job that you have to commit all this time to, or you have to do it for a long term. It's just as easy as saying you'll do it once. And sometimes yes. that's, that's all you have to do. Um, yes. It doesn't have to be and a it big job. One, it does count. One hour count. Like when I was on the PTA, I would tell the parents, I don't need you to stay all day because in their minds, when you ask them to volunteer, I don't have time. I was like, I haven't even asked you. Can you just give me 15 minutes in the morning? Stand at the door and say hello. Right. Okay, Vandela, 15 minutes. And then I started talking about other things. Okay, can you volunteer on this? And next thing you know, they're all in. And the kids are happy. Everybody's happy. And so it, it starts with just a minimal amount. What Can you give me 15 minutes? Right. That's all I'm asking. Just 15 minutes. Right. And it's intimidating. It can be really intimidating for people. And it, yes because, it can yeah we talked about this um when i talked about when i was talking to monica at the pregnancy resource center um we were talking about the different ways that you can volunteer because it's not just about one thing there's so many ways that people's gifts can be yes. used for all kinds of different things and yes. um i mean you're talking about something that you know being a professional uh volunteer where you are connecting people together that's that's an important thing as well but it's out of the box thinking that's like something that most people don't consider when they when they think about volunteering they don't think about doing something yes. like that but it can be so there's so many different ways that God uses our talents and so yes I don't know talk a little bit about that um I I truly believe that everything happens for a reason <clears throat> and I I don't take anything for granted mm -hmm. in and I'm, I'm, I try to be grateful and humble because I believe when you, when you acknowledge the small things and say, please, and say, thank you, because a lot of people don't. And I try to always, no matter where, even as an administrator, when I was working in the prison system, I always try to connect to the secretaries because they know everything and people, they're like invisible people. And I always, when I started volunteering, I always tried to find out who the custodial staff was. Mm. You know why? Because they know and see and hear everything. Now you sound like Rick Harold. And <laughs> <laughs> Rick Harold always talks about that. He always say, you know, the, the maintenance crew and the people that go and take care of all the, the parks, they're the ones that I really yes. want to talk to. Those are the people you want to talk to because they know everything and people see them as the invisible people like they had, they can't hear or they can't see. Right. And, and yes, it's like, like, oh, that's just the, the cleaning person. They have eyes and ears. Right. And I love communicating with them because I'm always doing something and I never wanted to put an extra burden on a teacher to meet me at school early to, can you stay late? Or I could do whatever I needed to do. I would get the permission from the principal. And I said, don't worry about it. I have coverage. I'll be able to get into the building. I just need your permission to. And of course, custodial staff is always going to be there. I'd send them a message, call them, can you meet me? So, oh, yes, they unload stuff for me, pack stuff up for me, find stuff for me that I've left in another classroom that I didn't even realize I had lost. I put it in, <laughs> in your closet and it's in behind this box. And thank you. Yes. But it's because of the way you treat people. Mm hmm. 100% and looking yeah. at everybody's life as the not even a life it's looking at everybody's talents as though they have value and realizing that everyone does have 
talents and gifts yes. that fit into so many different places. Yes. Um, when you start to look at people like that and you think, okay, this person has a real knack for talking. This person has a real knack for, and it doesn't even have to be singing or talking. It's like this person really knows how to, I don't know, organize something yes. as simple as yes. that. It, it's it can all they, of it is this valuable. person knows. Yes, it's all valuable. This person knows how to line up the chairs when we're going we're going to have a meeting. I like my chairs lined up like soldiers. People know that. Right. So, that's important to me. So they, Ms. Vandell, I got the chairs for you. That matters. And even when I was on campus with the kids, I would have what I would call my ambassadors. I was like, okay, if you want to be my ambassador, you have to do this, 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 and this. And I didn't care about your grades. Kids want to be involved. Mm -hmm. And I would always try and gravitate to the kids that did that wasn't with the popular kids mm -hmm. and tell them, okay, can you do this for me? Well, I can't because of this. Okay, can you do this for me? Or when I have this meeting, can you just make sure I get all of my pens and my paper, make sure everything is collected? And I would, I would find people like once a month and have like a lunch for order pizza or something that was donated or sponsored for my ambassadors. And the kids loved it. And I was like, okay, you recruit, you're my recruiters. So whenever I have, would have an event, I will let my ambassadors recruit for me. And it was like, I have another friend that wants to be a, a ambassador, Ms. Vandella. Okay, tell them to show up. This is what we're doing. We did 10 on Tuesdays. It started out with just three kids picking up trash, 10 pieces of trash on Tuesdays. It grew to probably like 30 kids that would meet me wow. before school. Before yes. school. Before school. Yes. Don't tell Before me that kids school. don't care because they do care. Kids they care. care. They they kids care. They just yes. nobody ever asks them. Nobody ever asks. And people want to be asked. They're mm -hmm. not going to wait for you to call. People want to be asked. They do. And I don't mind asking. And I, I'm not offended. I tell people that volunteer, if you tell me no and you can't, don't feel bad because I'm going to ask you for something else the next time. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I, you know, I, I find this to be the truth whenever I started doing this podcast and people, you know, you're used to interviewing and you've been in a, that type of forum before. A lot of people have never done an interview. So number one, they have no idea what to expect. But when I say, would you mind talking to me? And they say, I don't really have anything interesting to say, or I'm not really that interesting of a person. I say, that's not true. And I wouldn't be asking you if I didn't think you were. And I ask everyone because I think everyone has something valuable to say. And, yeah. um, and sometimes it takes a little bit of poking and prodding, but then they come on and they're like, well, that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be, or that lasted, yeah. you know? And so, and then it's, it's now that's one new thing that they've, that they can do that they've done. And that's an experience yeah. that they can talk about. And the same is true for, for getting people involved in doing things because, um, my dog is walking around. Oh, I was like, what is going on? There's a shadow. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, when, when people experience that they can do something that they didn't realize that they could do before, it's a, it's a totally, it just opens up their mind that much more to being able to want to do yes. it again. And I think kids are like mm -hmm. that a lot. Yes, they are. They really are. And they want to be able to tell their friends or tell someone mm -hmm. I did this. Yeah, exactly. So and, and, and then they, they have provided value to, in that case, they've cleaned yes. something up. They've now yes. they're, now they're more involved and now they're more engaged and now they're more invested. Invested will be the right word. Yes. Their school or whatever exactly. they're doing that for. Um, I know, I, I know we only have a couple more minutes. We're going to have to have another, a whole nother time where we do another episode and talk, <laughs> but like, <laughs> if someone wanted to like, get started with getting to know and I'll, I'll put I'll say elected officials because I feel like those are the sometimes they're the most intimidating if someone wanted to get to know their local official what would you tell them having known people that are in elected office 
as easy as it is to get in, to get in touch with an elected official and have a conversation. <laughs> Just get involved. They have community events regularly. Mm -hmm. Like they have attend a, a city council meeting. That is the opportunity for you to meet every elected official that runs our city. Mm -hmm. Yep. Attend a city council meeting. And when, once you become a regular or just introduce yourself and tell them if you have anything going on, I'd like to volunteer. What a great, that is a and great opportunity. Awesome. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. You have all of the council members there at that that moment yeah and sometimes and, and most of the time they they I'm sorry they come out early or they may stick around just to meet whoever is there that and if you've never been to a city council meeting you that's something you might not know but that's as simple as it is if you really want to get involved in, and have a voice in your local community what a great that I love that is go introduce yourself and say do you need anything I'm here I can do you have anything coming up I can volunteer for you and yes. they will call you <laughs> Trust yes, me. they will call you <laughs> yes they will call you and, and now you've taken down that veil of like that barrier where you might not know them, yes. you know, and it, that's, that's really yes. what we need is more people to do that. But um, I just appreciate you. I think you're so cool. Like I, I would love to sit down. I would love to talk more about your experience <laughs> uh, with your career before you did this. I'm sure you have some very interesting stories. <laughs> yes, I do. I, I loved every day of my career. I started out as a correctional officer and not realizing my goal was just to go there and work like six months enough to save money for it to get me a red Corvette and then go back to Chicago. I ended up not getting the Corvette and retiring. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that is awesome. I love that so much. Um, man, yes. well, Vandela, it was such a pleasure. Um, I'm going to yes. contact you again because we need to sit down and have and have a part two. Yes, <laughs> definitely. We'll talk about my career. We will not. This is my I call I tell people this volunteering is the second phase mm -hmm. of my life. My my professional life for 25 years with was with the Bureau of Prisons. And I can't wait until next year. I will have been with my husband as many years as I lived without him. Oh, so that's wonderful. Wait. Yes. Oh, that's exciting. Next, next week, we will have been together 28 years. 28 years. So oh. next year, 29. Yeah, it'll be, I will, half of my life will have been spent with him. Oh, that is so amazing. That is awesome. Congratulations yes. for that. That's, that's a feat in and of Dude. itself. <laughs> Yes, it is. Yeah. And and when I tell people, and I want to let you go after this, my husband, I could not be the person that I am because he truly supports me unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And no matter what it is, he has supported me. And he is such a behind the scenes kind of person, but he always asks any questions and what I can do better and you know, can do you do this? And what about that? Did you think about this? Uh, just giving me ideas to improve the relationships, you know, that I have, or he'll remind me, well, what about this organization? Don't they do? I was like, yo, yeah, they do. And he's just such a wonderful resource. And we have been together that long. We met in jail that I always like to tell people. <laughs> And two weeks later, we were living together, playing footsies, and we've been playing footsies ever since. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> yes. Well, that's that's awesome that he, it, it, that's an engaged person right there. Somebody that's really engaged. Yes. With what their partner is doing, and um, you know, that's and we've never had an argument. People are like what? Really? Is that possible? not one my husband has the personality like I wake up laughing I go to sleep laughing like uh, seriously man now I want to meet him <laughs> <laughs> he does not get upset he doesn't let anything upset him he's like we'll figure out a way don't worry about it we'll mm -hmm. figure it we'll figure it's not that bad we'll figure out a way and that's how he lives 
we'll figure oh. out a way. What a great, that's a great way to spend a lifetime with someone is like it that. It is. Yeah. It is. Well, good. It is. Well, well, thank you so much for this opportunity to spend this time with you and your patients. And I'm going to, I guess we'll wait for part two. Oh, I'm, tell, I'm down. I like, I'm serious. To, <laughs> <laughs> to yes. meet you personally. Yes, yes, yes and I, very much. I'm looking forward to that. I think that um, hopefully all this pandemic stuff is, is we're on the right track and we'll all be yes. around each other soon. Although we would have, we would have today, but um, you know, but that's okay. That's Zoom comes in at, as a, as a secondary way to make stuff happen. So, but next yes, time. Yes, it does. <laughs> all right. Yes. Bye, Vandela. Well, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Bye. Have a great evening. Bye, you too. Bye.